to go? Okay. Good evening, Council, Senior Management Team, and residents of Pelham, and associated guests. So we have here, I see we have quorum. So we'll uh, now stand and sing the national anthem, <coughs> led by our clerk. Now, councillors, after uh, reviewing the agenda, is there any changes to the agenda? Seeing none, I call the. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Motion. You'd think I'd get used to this by now. Motion put forward to by Councillor Trophy, seconded by Councillor Core. Be it resolved that the agenda for the June 3rd, 2019 regular meeting of council be adopted as circulated. All those in favor? All those in favor. Thanks. Motion carries. And uh, disclosure of pecuniary interest and general nature thereof. Does any councillor have a pecuniary interest to declare? Well, I, in fact, do have one. Item number, agenda item number 18. It's the in camera item. I will excuse myself from that. Um, as I have a relative on there. Okay, hearing a presentation, delegates regional report. Presentations, our first presentation of the evening is Niagara Region creating a new regional official plan, spring 2019 update, and I believe the presenter is a David Hayworth, uh, official plan policy consultant. Thank you for joining us tonight. Good evening, uh, Mayor, uh, members of Council, staff, and the public. I'm pleased to uh, be standing here before our municipal partners and providing you an update on the new regional official plan. My colleague, Sean Norman, who's in the audience, will be following me and providing you an update on the Natural Environment Background Study, which is a very key background study to help inform the official plan. So we're creating a new official plan and we want to create a, an official plan that implements provincial policies and plans as amended, reflects current goals and priorities of the community and council, and provide clear direction for our local planning partners with flexibility where appropriate. Now there's a reason we're doing a new official plan as opposed to amendments to the existing official plan and that's because uh, back in the 70s when the official plan was a regional policy plan. The main mandate of the region at the time was preservation of agricultural lands and the setting of urban boundaries. Over time, planning's become more complex and more comprehensive, and there's been the downloading of planning responsibilities from the province to the region. So we want to create a new official plan on a more contemporary platform as opposed to amending an old, more outdated platform. <coughs> So this slide basically shows the process that we've been undertaking so far. Um, at the first quarter of 2019 in March, Regional Council, Regional Planning Committee and then Council approved uh, a consultation framework timeline. 
then I'll be talking a little bit more of that as we move along. So the official plan, as I mentioned, is going to be informed by various background studies. And there's four under growth management and four under rural and natural systems. There's already been a substantial amount of work that's done that's been completed under Niagara 2041. There was a water and wastewater master plan that was completed and a transportation master plan that was completed. And those studies are also key elements that will inform the official plan. In addition to these, we're also doing a cultural heritage discussion paper and we've undertaken an archaeological management, preparation of an archaeological management plan. There's three municipalities in Niagara with their own management plans. I believe Pelham, Niagara-on-the-Lake, and Fort Erie. But other municipalities don't have one. So we want to create a regional archaeological management plan and help update the management plans of the municipalities that have one now. I'll talk a bit about the growth management and rural natural systems as we go along. This is basically the high-level process framework. We're undertaking the background studies now and we're going through consultations with stakeholders, the public. We'll, in 2020, with those background studies helping to inform the preparation of policies, develop policies for each section, key main section of the official plan, and have consultation on that, those policies. Then, at the beginning of 2021, we want to put together a comprehensive uh, official plan merging all those sections together and that will give about a year's time for back and forth consultation and revisions of the complete plan before a regional council would adopt it and then it would go to the province for approval. So I'll talk a little bit about growth management. One of the key background studies we're doing is a land needs assessment or land budget. We want to determine the amount of land needed for residential and employment growth to 2041. And we also want to establish a process to deal with urban boundary expansions. Um, <clears throat> with the old growth plan that was in effect, urban boundary expansions had to be dealt with through the Municipal Comprehensive Review or the new official plan. With the new growth plan that's come out, there's an avenue or a window of opportunity perhaps under certain conditions for expansions to proceed ahead of that review. So we want to establish a framework to help guide those anticipated requests coming in before the new official plan is completed. Urban structure is another key component of the official plan and that is a structure which identifies strategic areas to direct growth and intensification and we want those implemented through the secondary plan. Those areas of strategic uh, intensification and growth are areas that are serviced by public transit, have uh, proper municipal services in place and community facilities to maximize all of that. And establishing these strategic areas of growth also helps protect established neighborhoods. <clears throat> so this is a high level Ur our urban preliminary urban structure components that we've been discussing and we'll continue to discuss those with area planners before we develop policies and then bring those back for input. But you have an urban growth center which is downtown St. Catharines, regional centers which downtown Niagara Falls, downtown Welland, <coughs> our GO transit station areas where you've heard we've done the four secondary plans for the GO transit station areas. Other strategic growth areas, which could be the Brock District Plan area that we've done and the Glendale District Plan area that's being undertaken right now. And then there's local centers and local corridors that our municipal, par municipal partners can identify in their own official plans. We also want to undertake an employment land strategy, and that is to identify and protect a sufficient and marketable supply of land for employment uses. So we want to identify employment areas in the regional official plan, and those areas are protected from conversion to other land uses. They would need a regional plan amendment and have to go through a comprehensive review to convert those. So we've been working with the area planners to help us identify those important employment areas, and they're being incorporated in the study that we've been undertaking. 
housing strategy is another key component. We want to plan for an appropriate range and mix of housing forms to provide choice, affordable options, and aging in place opportunities. We want to align with the region's housing and homelessness action plan. And we've hired a consulting firm to, to prepare um, housing data. We want to understand what the numbers are and what the data is <coughs> in terms of identifying what the core housing needs are in the region and the various municipalities. And we've gathered that data and shared it, shared it with area planners, and I believe it'll be going out to the municipal council shortly for your review. Rural and natural systems is another key component. Agriculture, we want to inform the identification and protection of our agricultural land and support the agriculture industry as the primary one of the primary drivers of Niagara's economy. Basically, our agricultural policies are quite contemporary, and we want to make sure they stay like that, and we want to do a um, conformity exercise where we make sure our policies are in conformity with the provincial plan. I'm going to leave natural environment. Uh, Sean will be talking about that in his presentation. Aggregate resources. <coughs> We undertook a state of the aggregates background study back uh, around 2016. It was brought to our committee and council, and that was started under uh, the Imagine Niagara process. Um, so that was approved, and it kind of gave an idea of what the state of aggregates are in Niagara region. Uh, after that, the province updated its policies through the um, comprehensive review of all the provincial plans. So we did a technical addendum to bring that document into conformity with those updated policies. So we're in the process of developing draft policies now that will probably be uh, available for open houses we plan in the fall. Another large uh, component of the rural and natural systems is climate change, although it's related to all the urban development as well. And this slide basically shows the interrelationships of all the different components of the official plan that affect climate change, complete communities, infrastructure, transportation, energy, the natural environment, waste, greenhouse gas emission targets. So we're currently uh, uh, holding multidisciplinary meetings within the region because it's it affects public health, it affects a variety of regional departments, and we're doing jurisdictional scans and best practices and pulling together a discussion document that will be released and available for, for the public to take a look at and councils and then will help inform the official plan policy development. So in terms of consultation, I mentioned there is a consultation framework approved in March 2019. We're building on the Imagine Niagara consultations. You can see in the triangle uh, the important themes that were raised by the public uh, through Imagine Niagara. And those themes have, uh, I guess, been supported by the findings through the Shape Niagara exercise. So we have a gr very good idea of what the high level important items are to the public. So now when we go out for consultations, we want to bring them background and options and draft policies, something of sub substance for them to actually take a look at, review, and comment on. So we just updated our website now, and we've been holding stakeholder information sessions on the natural environment work. Uh, Sean will be talking about that, and we have public information sessions planned in the fall of this year. This basically shows the, the consultation timeline framework from fall 2019 to the draft consolidation in 2021. And our next steps are to complete the background work, have the fall consultations, and we'll have a third uh, local council checkpoint uh, in the spring of 2020. This ba slide basically shows the, the structure we have for the, the anticipated for the new regional official plan, a sustainable region, a growing region, a connected region, a competitive region, and a vibrant region with an explanation as to what they entail. That concludes the presentation. Thank you.
Thank you. Any questions from council? I have one, but I'll uh, call it anyone else uh, want to have a go. Yeah, council Joseph. Yeah, <clears throat> if you can go back to uh, slide ten. <clears throat> says uh, growth management employee employment land strategy. Is there anything that would be talked about for the cannabis industry, separating that and under employment? And then it would be the same, I would go to uh, slide uh, 12, which would be rule and natural systems for agriculture, protecting agriculture and form and the identification and protection of our agriculture land. Right now, cannabis is, the cannabis industry is agriculture. Is there anything going to be in the official plan in regards to that, or is there any talk about it? Uh, through the mayor to the councillor. So for the employment areas are more of the traditional employment areas, the manufacturing type of employment areas. Some local municipalities allow uh, cannabis production facilities in their industrial areas. That's a local decision, as well as they're in greenhouse operations in the agricultural areas. So from a more generic standpoint, it gets picked up in terms of specifically analyzing, that's not our intent right now to specifically focus on that issue. But I will say that we are looking to table a report to our planning committee about facilitating a meeting or workshop type of situation with the various regulatory agencies to discuss the cannabis issue to help out our local partners. Okay, thank you. Any other council? So my question to you, or perhaps it's a statement, is that, uh, and you've touched on it, the transportation master plan. Uh, for the last, let's say it's almost a generation now, we've heard about the, about the trans uh, corridor, uh, trans peninsula corridor, supposed to run diagonally from Grimsby to Fort Erie, and that's all we hear. I mean, somewhere along the line, those plans have been on somebody's book, started in Toronto, They've been at the region, probably at least 50 years were going on. And, 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 and if you talk to anybody else about that today, well, we won't see it in our lifetime. So then the question has got to be, are we just wishing, and is this a pie in the sky? And, and really, maybe there seems to be a growing push that instead of trying to do a, a, a corridor like that, that we should be actually thinking of doing widening fixing roads from, let's say, Grimsby down to Dunville and do it in that way. Fix existing roads to, and use those roads to get the trucks off the Queen Elizabeth Way between uh, uh, Grimsby and, say, even Niagara Falls. Is, is, what's your take on that as a planner? I mean, it just it seems that the plan is going nowhere. At what point do you as a planner say, okay, let's go to plan B? Uh, well, to the mayor, I'm not a transportation expert, I'm a general planner, so I, I wouldn't want to try and comment on that specifically. I, I do come from Port Erie where, you know, the phase one EA was approved for the ex uh, highway extension, kind of from Welland down to Port Erie QEW, but the time period of when the phase two would happen, et cetera, was really unknown, and, you know, it's dependent on where the province is going with that. So I appreciate the frustration and timelines when you're dealing with those kinds of projects. I w all I would say is we'll take your comments back and discuss them with the transportation section. Okay, and file them somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other uh, questions for the Yes, community? to you, Mr. Oh, Mayor. Yes. This Council version, Court. how does it mirror with the Ontario government's version of the Niagara region or their future? Are we in sync, or are they, you're going to pass this and they're going to pass something totally different? Uh, through the mayor to the councillor, well, we have to conform with provincial policy, and, and there's a hierarchy of legislation and provincial policy, so where it says you shall, we have to comply. Uh, where it's encourage or promote, then there's some flexibility for us to work within the intent and also address our our local issues and what our local partners may want. At the same time, we do push on in certain areas. For example, wineries. I think we have like 96 
wineries in Niagara, about a third are in the escarpment. And the policies for wineries in the escarpment area are more strict than in the Greenbelt plan area. So we've been trying to dialogue with the province to prompt some changes to the Niagara escarpment plan to allow the winery establishment of wineries or expansion of wineries in the Niagara Scarman plan area to be on the same level playing field as other wineries outside of the Niagara Scarman plan but we we can only push for so much or you know basically it's the provincial decision at the end of the day okay okay council yes thank yeah. you okay uh, seeing no more questions, um, I'm, I guess your presentation is over. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for it. Oh, so, um, I, I motion put forward by Councillor Cora, seconded by <coughs> Councillor Trophy. It is resolved that Council receive the presentation by David Hayward, Official Plan Consultant and well, Director, of, Director of Community and Long Range Planning at the Niagara Region for information. All those in favor? All those opposed, motion carries. And, oh, sorry, that was my down. So our next delegation is, um, again, from the Niagara Region, Sean Norman, senior planner, discussing natural environment background study for the region, regional official plan. Thank you, Sean, for uh, coming out tonight. Good evening, Mayor and members of Council. My name is Sean Norman and I am a Senior Planner in Community and Long Range Planning at Niagara Region. I'm here this evening to provide you an overview of the Natural Environment Work Program that is being undertaken in support of the new Niagara Official Plan, as well as to provide a summary of some of the key findings of the background study that is being completed. Before I go into more detail on the scope of work, I would like to briefly present some of the reasons why natural environment planning is such an important component of the new Niagara official plan. Firstly, natural environment planning supports the identification of areas for growth and development. For example, at a regional level, it helps identify where new growth areas should be. Secondly, there are a range of provincial requirements that must be implemented by the region. This work program allows us to understand uh, our responsibilities for implementing these requirements. The third bullet point refers to the important ecosystem level role that natural systems play in our daily lives. As you know, agriculture, tourism, and other industries in Niagara rely on clean water and air for their success. Natural environment planning supports the vitality of these industries by ensuring that there is a healthy natural environment for the long term. Fourthly, there is a link between natural environment and human health, both physical and mental. Natural environment planning ensures that green spaces required for the well-being of Niagara residents will be available for generations to come. Finally, planning for climate change will be a common theme throughout the new official plan and will be addressed in each one of our work plans. <clears throat> we will be striving to better understand the connection between natural environment planning and climate change. The definition of natural environment can mean something different to everyone. To ensure that the work program would be well understood, we attempted to clearly define it as an early step in the project. In scope includes all of the environmental features and environmental systems as generally defined by the province. Some of the identified topics are very extensive. For example, natural heritage features includes woodlands, wetlands, habitat, valley lands, areas of natural and scientific interest, and more. What is being presented on this slide is an overview of the key phases of the work program. The processes being undertaken is generally the same as would be used for any other planning or scientific study. Information is collected, options are developed and analyzed, and an implementation plan is created for the preferred option. In addition, there are a number of major points of engagement that will be used to inform the technical aspects of the work. As highlighted, we are currently on phase three, 
and are striving to inform and educate our stakeholders and partners on some of the key topics and issues related to natural environment planning in the region. At this stage, we have not developed options for evaluation and have yet to prepare draft policies. That work will be done during later phases of the project. The Natural Environment Background Study, in addition to discussion papers on mapping and watershed planning, will form the basis of the project moving forward. Their purpose is to ensure that policy development will be informed by science and the best available information. The scope of the background study was prepared in consultation with planning staff at each municipality and covers both general topics <coughs> as well as issues and trends that are specific to Niagara. Some of the key topics will be overviewed in the next few slides. Much of the direction for natural environment planning is provided by the province. Provincial direction starts with the provincial policy statement. The PPS identifies the type of natural features, areas, functions, and systems that must be identified and protected. In some areas of the province, in some areas, the province has identified more detailed natural heritage systems and policies. In Niagara, we are responsible for implementing the Provincial Greenbelt Natural Heritage System and Provincial Growth Plan Natural Heritage System. The Greenbelt NHS has been in place for a number of years and is generally reflected in existing regional policies. The Growth Plan NHS is new and is being implemented in the regional official plan for the first time. Finally, the province provides a number of guidelines and other tools to support municipalities. These include, for example, the Natural Heritage Reference Manual and Greenbelt Technical Papers. As the two primary land uses in the rural areas of the region, it is critical to develop natural environment and agricultural systems which are compatible with one another. Provincial direction and existing regional policies are generally clear that natural heritage policies are not intended to restrict agricultural operations. For example, policy 2.1.9 of the PPS provides specific direction that the natural heritage policies of the PPS are not intended to limit the ability of agricultural uses to continue. Further, there are many exemptions in both the Greenbelt and Growth Plan NHS policies related to agricultural buildings and structures. Finally, there is a common misconception that where a buffer is required between a new agricultural building and natural feature that it must be natural vegetation. In fact, both the Greenbelt Plan and Growth Plan include exemptions that state where land will continue to be used for agricultural purposes, there is not a requirement for natural self-sustaining vegetation. Buffers in agricultural areas may continue to be planted with crops. Woodlands and other treed areas are often the most publicly valued components of a natural system. When considering woodlands to be protected through policy, it is significant woodlands which are considered to be key features. It is the responsibility of municipalities to identify and map significant woodlands, which is generally done through a two-step process. First, woodlands are identified and mapped based on de defined criteria. Second, criteria are developed and applied to determine significance. Criteria can include, for example, proximity to other natural features and the size of a woodland. Within the provincial NHSs, provincial policy for the protection of significant woodlands are to be used. Outside of provincial NHSs, municipalities are responsible for developing policies, which must be in conformance with the PPS. A related tool for the management and protection of trees and woodlands are local and regional tree bylaws. The Municipal Act sets out clear parameters of what may be permitted in regional bylaws and what may be permitted in local tree bylaws. Outside of the new Niagara official plan, the region has recently initiated an update to the regional tree and forest conservation bylaw. Following completion of the official plan, there would be a process to ensure proper alignment between these two tools. Climate change and invasive species are recognized as two of the most significant threats to the natural environment and can often work in conjunction with one another to, to accelerate the deterioration of our natural areas. With respect to the relationship between natural environment and climate change, 
This generally means two things. Planning to protect our natural areas from the impacts of climate change and understanding that natural areas are an important tool for mitigation and resilience. For example, natural areas such as floodplains and wetlands can help mitigate the impacts of large storm events by storing storm water, encouraging infiltration, and releasing it at more reasonable rates. There are many invasive species that are creating issues in Niagara, including Phragmites, garlic mustard, European buckthorn, and emerald ash borer. Directly controlling invasive species is difficult through the land use policies of official plans alone. And is often and is typically better addressed through bylaws and other management tools. However, consideration needs to be given to how we classify woodlands and other areas that are in transition as a result of the impacts of invasive species. Watersheds are defined as an area that is drained by a river and its tributaries. The PPS requires that watersheds be the ecologically meaningful scale of integrated and long term planning. Watershed planning provides a framework for the protection of water resources and the management of human and natural resources at a watershed scale. It is not a new concept. However, recent provincial changes have reinforced the need for watershed planning to inform land use planning. The region will now have a lead role in coordinating watershed planning. A high priority discussion paper is being completed to better inform the updated process roles and responsibilities related to watershed planning. In addition to presentations to all of the local councils, we will also be consulting with the public and other stakeholders. Following this process, we will be reporting back to regional council with everything that we have heard. The next steps are to complete this first point of engagement and to finalize the background study and high priority discussion papers. Based on all the input that we receive, we will begin to develop and evaluate various options for how natural systems and policies in the region could be developed. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Any questions for the presenter from Council? Uh, I have one. Sure. So the watershed planning used to be exclusively done by the NCPA, I believe. And, uh, and who was the uh, primary mover to move it from the NCPA back to the region? And, and perhaps even why did that occur? Um, to, to the mayor, I think it was probably a twofold thing. I think historically you're right, the Conservation Authority did have a lead role in watershed planning. Uh, other stakeholders are involved. The watershed planning I think that they were doing at that time was really focused on some of their mandate and some of their roles. Uh, their roles. It was really kind of focused on um, restoration and enhancement areas and some of the programs they were running. With the new growth plan that came out in 2017, there was really this kind of strong direction from the province that watershed planning needed to better inform land use planning. So I think in the past what was being happened is watershed planning was being done in Niagara and elsewhere and there wasn't really a connection back <coughs> to land use planning. Uh, planners weren't really using that information to make their decisions. So there was really kind of a push uh, to do that and say that land use planning needed to be informed by watershed planning. And within the new growth plan, there's basically a statement that says uh, single and upper tier municipalities will have a lead role for watershed planning in conjunction with other stakeholders. So I think that was really kind of the driver um, to, for the change was the direction and the growth plan that uh, gave that responsibility to the municipalities. Okay. Great. Thank you. Uh, uh, Council Corps? Yes. Uh, what is the region's strategy in using invasive species? I, how, many, how many hectares of, uh, or acres of land are we losing or how many trees are we losing in the Niagara region? And what is your strategy of stopping these or? or uh, through the mayor to the councilor. I think. That's a really a big part of our background study. I think that's um, probably one of the most common things that we're hearing. One of the most common questions that we're getting early in this process is about invasive species and emerald ash borer and woodlands, for example, as one of them. So that was a big part of our background study. We had our consulting team look at that and try and make us some recommendations of you know, what others are doing, what we should be doing, and what are some of the best practices. Really the first thing that's come out of that is something like invasive species is difficult through the official plan alone. 
you know, it's hard to, uh, when an official plan and the policies we have are really kind of focused on development and changes in land use. So with, without those changes, it's difficult to do anything. So some of the findings that we, that kind of came out is that there needs to be more, there needs to be bylaws or other strategies to be put in place. So I would say at this time, that's not something we have strong strategies or policies for, but what we're seeing through that work, through the work that we're doing, that's probably something important to, to recommend and certainly something needs to be done about it because there is being lost in transition. From so through you, Mr. Mayor, so you're suggesting that if we don't have strategy of having bylaws and we could we could be losing a, a lot of trees and yeah through the mayor to the councilor certainly that's the kind of our findings is that you know having official plan policies alone is probably not going to be sufficient uh, with the invasive species there's a lot of damage being done and i think what we're seeing now is that the damage that's being done and the rates of change are much faster that's happened than anything in the past so certainly other others uh, actions will be required thank you yeah. any other councilors any questions well, thank you for your presentation. Thank you. Motion put forward by Councillor Hahn, seconded by Councillor Trophy. Be it resolved that Council receive the presentation by Sean Norman, Senior Planner at the Niagara Region, for information. All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion carries. And our next presenter for the evening will be uh, not Doug Hamilton, as we see on the agenda, but Victoria Wilkson, planning part of the planning team uh, that is indeed trying to mold the 2021 games uh, into a uh, into a happening. Uh, you know, uh, nice to have you here. Thank you, Mayor, Mayor, Councilors, Town of Pelham, City staff, and residents. Thank you for sharing your time with me this evening. I have here with me my colleague and CEO, Dr. Barry Wright. I bring official greetings from our 2021 Chairman Doug Hamilton, who unfortunately got pulled away from tonight's presentation. So you get to listen to me. <laughs> this evening, we, our board of directors and our staff have, for the last year and a little bit, have been knee deep in our planning. We've been taking our winning bid document and transferring it into a living and breathing business plan supported by the province, the federal, federal government, and as well as Canada Games Council and Sport Canada. We've been going through all of that planning and as we're starting to come out of it and approaching our two year out countdown, we have taken a very concentrated effort to reach out to all of our municipalities, every single one of them, 12 plus the region, and speaking to staff, councillors, mayors, and residents at large, basically to share where we're at with the Canada Games and to express the platform that we're building. We are in a very exciting development um, phase where we know internally that we are developing the best platform for the Canada Games to date. So it's my honor this evening just to share a few things that we're doing a very high level. We are currently working with your staff and we'll continue to work with your staff through our working groups as we come to fruition in the Games in 2021. Just a little bit about the Canada Games first. It's a complete celebration of sport and culture. I know we call it the Canada Games, but it is split. Sport programming and cultural program and our uh, programs for both are completely robust. First held in Canada's 1967 centennial, they're held every two years alternating between winter and summer following the Olympic program. 2017 Winnipeg saw the last summer games and we just came back from Red Deer in Alberta in February for the 19 winter games to which our host society and key members of our uh, board were able to have a full transfer of knowledge. I'll never complain about being cold again because minus 42 is not something that was enjoyable. <laughs> 2021 will be the third games in Ontario. This is very important to understand that even though the games do alternate every two years and they go from coast to coast, the next time they will be in Ontario will be 24 years from 2021. And even when they do return, they will never return to Niagara nor any municipality in Niagara. They're here once and once only. And the neat thing about the games and the platform that we're building is 60% of our participants go on to become Olympic medalists. This is the platform that we're developing for them. 
some of those who do not go on to become Olympic medalists, this is their platform. So we have to make sure that we make it an enjoyable one for them, a memorable one for them, because this may be where they plateau. It is our hope, of course, that 100% go on to become Olympians. So now a little bit about Niagara and the games that we're bringing to the region in 2021. They're held in August with opening ceremonies on August the 6th and closing ceremonies on Saturday, August 21st. There are two waves. These two weeks are divided literally into two week programs. The first wave will include 2,500 athletes. They'll turn around, depart, and the second wave comes in with another 2,500 athletes. 18 sports in total, 5,000 game participants, 4,000 volunteers needed to execute our games. Again, this is a very high level presentation this evening. Our sport program, as I mentioned, 18 sports competing at venues across Niagara. I'm sure through the papers and some of our other council presentations, you'll see that we're pushing hard for some new, uh, new legacy venue builds. It is our hope to come back at the end of the month into July and announce great news from our government that we're proceeding forward with those new legacy builds. Within the 18 sports, three of them will be parallel uh, athletes, athletics, swimming, and sailing. And very, very cool is the two sports from the Special Olympic athletes, being athletics and being swimming. Back in April, we were so delighted to hear from the Sport Canada and from the federal government that box lacrosse will be introduced into our 2021 games as a pilot program. Very excited about this, especially for our Indigenous inclusion. Dr. Wright will talk a little bit about our volunteer program that we need. We will be working with both institutes from Brock University and Niagara College. And Jerry, sure. wanna plug in? Very excited there? about this. This is where we have an opportunity for all of Niagara to get involved in, in, the, uh, in the games. So as uh, Victoria was uh, mentioning, we'll have 5,000 athletes. Um, many of us might be just a little beyond the, the group to be able to become in as an athlete, but we definitely have an opportunity to be actively engaged uh, as a volunteer. One of the things that we're really looking uh, at from our perspective is building the team. And so we're building the team, if you will, from a staff standpoint. And we will be, at the time the games will be operating, somewhere in the neighborhood of 65 to 70 individuals there. But our job is to basically to, to help bring the volunteers on board. These games will be volunteer run. And so in all the venues, the 18 venues, we'll be having hundreds and hundreds of volunteers that will be at each one of those sites, uh, being great uh, ambassadors for Niagara in all our areas. And that includes our Games of Village that will be at Brock University, but also we'll have uh, the, the residents at Niagara College as well actively engaged uh, in all our events as well. So these 4,000 volunteers will be starting recruiting relatively soon for what we'll call kind of our super committee, kind of our, our games organizing committee. And there'll be about 35 key volunteers that will be, each one will have a, a key element that they'll be responsible for. It could be transportation, could be sports, could be venues. Um, and these individuals will build their next layer of teams. We'll talk with them, through, go through a lot of our, our uh, targeted planning with these individuals. They will there then have, if you will, 18 uh, venue teams plus the games villages and things that will be the next layer. And so if you will, 30 will become up around, around 500 to 600 volunteers. And then after that, once we have those volunteers and organized, then that's when we get the mass introduction of volunteers for the games. And that would be approximately one year out we'll be starting to, to invite uh, the rest of Niagara to, to really join us. So we are, we're going to be starting on our targeted uh, volunteer uh, process uh, very shortly uh, for all the key areas. And then, as I say, we'll expand it out uh, after that. Thanks, Mayor. As we approach our two-year mark, and I'll talk a little bit about more of that in the next slide, you'll start to see we'll, we'll re launch our new logo, we'll launch our new visuals, we'll introduce our new website to you and so forth, where you'll be able to capture and register yourself as a volunteer for the Games. I'm going to go back and really emphasize on that once in Ontario, once in Niagara emphasis. As we worked with our creative team, our board of directors came with a very clear vision for the games was to inspire, transform, and unify. Inspire not only our residents and the planning team and our athletes, but everybody who puts their fingerprint on these games. With the new legacy builds and with the new transformation of sport tourism in Niagara, we are hoping to transform Niagara and bring more high level events such as this to Niagara. And let me explain and pause because it's already in motion. 
As a result of us being awarded the 2021 Canada Games, Wrestling Canada has reached out to the host society and collectively we have booked the pre-Olympic trials in Niagara Falls in December. If those athletes competing in that, um, that, those trials will go on to represent Canada in the Tokyo 2021, uh, 2020 Olympics. So it's already happening. And with our new legacy builds, we'll have more of those type of tournaments and so forth. Unify, it's bringing all 12 municipalities together in a common goal in everything that we're trying to do with these games. Our tagline, once and for all, one time only for Niagara, one time only for our residents, but it's open for all, for those that want to participate. I'm very excited because this slide really is my portfolio of responsibility. I'm in charge of developing our cultural program, and that includes our opening and closing ceremonies. Our opening ceremonies will be held at the Meridian Center, but our closing ceremonies, I'm very excited, will be a rendition of New Year's Eve in Niagara Falls. We'll have closing ceremonies at Queen Victoria Park with over 80,000 people participating. It's August in Niagara. Just picture all these athletes in their, their gear walking down Murray Street from the Skyline Tower into Queen Victoria Park, collaborating, having music, fireworks illumination. It's a powerful way to end the games. No one else has done this like we are planning. We're taking this sporting and cultural event and taking a look at it through tourism lens because Niagara has hospitality like no other and that's how we're approaching these games. Our 13 for 13 cultural festival. 13 provinces and territories in, in Canada. We have 13 including the municipality or well, the region of Niagara, 13 municipalities here. We're going to partner one province with municipality and develop this really cool cultural program. Unlike a centralized concert site, we'll be going into every single municipality and doing a really neat event there. For example, the town of Pelham. On Thursday, August 19th, you'll be synchronized with the province of Manitoba. You uh, will be augmenting and enhancing your current food uh, market that you have that night. We're going to bring a lot of fun to it. We're going to bring a lot of concerts to it and so forth, but that will also tie in with the cycling sporting event to which the town of Pelham will have activity with. You are part of our cycling program. Our torch relay coming from Ottawa, coming down to Niagara in a very, very unique way, going through the wine route, going through the waterways, going through all 12 municipalities. Our milestone events, our first one, two year out, happening at Henley Regatta in collaboration with the rowing. August 5th, we invite every single one of you there. We'll share more as we have more details out. And of course, our one year out. One thing I've neglected, uh, ne uh, neglected to put on the screen was our mascot program, which we just launched a few weeks back. We're uh, with our students from all four boards, ages 10 to 15, to help us name and design our mascot, to which is a turtle. And let me explain. The turtle is supported by your Indigenous community as the North America is seen as Turtle Island. And on the back of a turtle, you have 13 large scales. We are 13 municipalities, 13 provinces and territories. Mm. They have a smaller mm. band of scales, which is 28 in total. We are the 28th games for the Canada Games. The turtle is a water species. We are summer sports. We have a sustainability program. Eight out of the, sorry, seven out of the eight turtle species in Ontario are all endangered. We have a really great educational program behind our mascot to which will become the guardian of the games. That was just rolled out. So we have more and more things that are coming out. We invite you to go to niagara2021.ca to learn more about the mascot program and get your children involved. But that was what we were here for mm -hmm. tonight. Very high level, let you know that we're coming out of our planning, and we're getting onto the community, and we're making this platform come alive. And that was just our way of just coming to your council and sharing a little bit of what we had to do. And with that, I say mercy and thank you. We do have an official language program. <laughs> Well, thank, thank you. you for a great presentation, and I think you can't go sit through that without oh, get the old blood pumping mm -hmm. and, uh, and and looking forward to this with uh, with a lot of anticipation. Thank and, you. and of course, uh, Pelham is going to be hosting the uh, the cycling events. Yeah, so, uh, so uh, excellent. Yes, uh, councillors, uh, any any questions or comments to the presenters? Yes, Councilor. just a comment for your uh, box lacrosse pilot program. We have two beautiful pads right in the center of Niagara, and they're equipped with shot clocks, and they're ready to go. So, <laughs> are you married to the counselor? Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> if our 
funding planning doesn't go, I gotta be calling you. <laughs> <laughs> Call me. <clears throat> okay, any other comments or no? Okay, great. Uh, thank you for bringing this, and we'll be looking uh, forward. Either have you have you got a website or a web page uh, up? Well, currently, our website that we have right now that's operable. Of course, the Canada Games official site is up there, but Niagara2021.ca. If you were to go to that website, you'll see that it includes. It's all about our turtle mascot right now, and that's the the URL that we'll continue to develop over the next few months. Okay. Okay. Great. But if you want to know more about our turtle, that's where you should start. Okay. Okay. You all become turtle experts in the next little while. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So we have a motion put forward by Councillor Hildebrand, seconded by Councillor Wink. Be it resolved that Council receive the presentation by Victoria Witzken and Director Barry Wright on behalf of um, Mr. Hamilton, yeah, regarding the 2021 Niagara Canada Summer Games for information. All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion is carried. Thank you. Okay, um, and that ends our presentations for tonight. So then we have motion put forward by Councillor Wink. Seconded by Councillor Hildebrand. Adoption of minutes. Be it resolved that the following minutes be adopted as printed, circulated, and read. Number one, SC-20, 2019, Special Council Minutes, May 21st, 2019, excuse me. And number two, C-09, 2019, Regular Council Minutes, May 21st, 2019. Uh, after reviewing those minutes, is any comments or questions? Seeing none, I'll ask for the vote. All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion carries. So then uh, down to number eight, request to lift consent agenda items for separate consideration. After viewing the uh, consent items, does any councillor have an item they wish to pull? <coughs> Seeing none. Then we have a uh, motion put forward by councillor Stewart, seconded by councillor Wink. Consent agenda items to be considered in block. Be it resolved that the consent agenda items as listed on the June 3rd, 2019 Council agenda be received and the recommendations contained therein be approved as applicable. All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion carries. Oh, that's it. Oh, that's it. Yep. Okay. And then proposals to replace the arches. Oh, so now we go way over. Unless you have any reports from members of council, but none were added to the agenda, so that brings us to here. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so there's no uh, staff reports. Oh, so reports from members of council. Staff reports, yes. So downward proposal to replace the arches. Uh, motion put forward by Councillor Trophy, seconded by Councillor Core. Whereas Council for the Town of Pelham invited submissions from the Pelham community for proposals to replace the arches over Pelham Town Square, which proposals were required to provide for a self-funded and sustainable initiative, and whereas no proposals other than the original initiative submitted by the Fond Hill Rotary Club and the Pelham Summerfest Committee were received, now therefore it be resolved that Council hereby endorses the fully funded project as proposed by the Fond Hill Rotary Club and the Pelham Summerfest Committee to fully fund the initiative to replace the arches over Pelham Town Square with no financial impact to the Pelham ratepayers, which proposal includes a fully engineered design 
construction and future maintenance of the feature and construction will be completed in full consultation with Town of Pelham staff and will be subject to all necessary permits. Any discussion on this motion? Councillor uh, Stewart. Yeah, what's so, her name? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I need the tag. Yes. Um, so I, I guess this is going to a vote tonight. But ahead of that, I believe that we need to enter into a binding agreement with the Rotary Club about the arches, um, things setting out um, like uh, procurement of their materials and everything according to the town RFP guidelines and making sure that whatever design they do put forward doesn't have an impact on the traffic as the last ones did. I'd also like to see an accounting to the town of the contributions for the maintenance of the funds that they say they're going to put forward. Uh, possibly a provision for them to help contribute to the cost of the insurance and uh, to make sure that they are going to be fully responsible for the cost of removal of the arches for whatever reason, storm damage, uh, end of life of the arches, or simply the discretion of the town at, at some point down the road. Okay, so, Madam Clerk, would all those be considered an amendment to the motion? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, the Councillor could make an amendment to the motion to direct staff to bring forward um, such an agreement that would be, of course, reviewed by our legal counsel. And uh, would that be, so we would have to defer this motion tonight then until such an agreement is before council? Um, th well, through you, Mr. Mayor, I you could make an amendment that it be pending final approval of that agreement and then we could bring the agreement back to um, a future meeting. I'm not certain we would get it back for the June 17th with the new schedule. Uh, coming, but we yeah. would bring it back as soon as we could. Okay, so we could pass this uh, on the approval <coughs> of passing, uh, of getting that um, other details from council then. But don't we, I don't know, I, I guess I'll leave it at your discretion. Well, the, the motion could, the amendment could direct staff to bring back a report on um, I believe I captured everything that the councillor was uh, was highlighting. Yes. And uh, she could make the motion that this approval be pending receipt of that. So okay. you could you could approve it in principle, for example, and I then see. it would be pending receipt of that agreement. Okay. Discussion on this. I, I, sorry, John. Uh, councillor. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor, if I recall the original proposal by the Rotary Club and Summerfest Committee, that there was going to be a set. Uh, amount of money set aside on an annual basis for maintenance of the of the arches and I believe it was a minimum of two thousand dollars per year ideally you wouldn't require any maintenance for the next number of years and you're going to be building up a, a fairly decent reserve before any type of maintenance has to be done so I as I said I, I believe that was in the original proposal and and I believe with that proposal, a number of these items would have been covered off. Okay, thank you. To you, Mr. Mayor. Would you not consider this as a gift? So the Rotary Club is going to raise funds, build us arches, and then they're going to hand it over to the town of Pelham. And that's considered a gift. I don't understand why we would ask the Rotary, uh, maybe 30 years out, to still maintain it and and look after it and eventually take it down. I, I think it's a gift and we should appreciate the, the, the gesture and, and move on from it. Yeah. That's my opinion. Thank you. Councillor Kelty. Yeah, I, I'm going to have to support uh, Councillor Cor on that as well. I was going to mention the same things. It is a gift. Uh, we can't expect them to look after it 30 years. They might not even be in existence in 30 years. Who knows? We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. And, and Councillor, you did mention, uh, and I'll bring this up, the, the RFP process, and, and I don't know how that would, um, perhaps the uh, clerk can help us out on that, uh, as this is a 
gift, a stated gift of a rather significant proportion. Uh, um, so it's not going through the RFP process because it was a gift. So how would you, uh, would the RFP reference in this uh, statement be, uh, well, would be what? <laughs> Uh, through Mr. Mayor, I would direct your question to the oh. Director of Corporate Services and oh. Treasurer, who is yes. most familiar with the procurement. Yes, through, through you, Mr. Mayor, um, this is not a town project. Like it's not, it's not one of our capital projects, and so um, I don't feel that it would need to go through the RFP process. I will check with legal on that, but right now, um, this is uh, this is being donated from the um, the Rotary Club and Summerfest Committee, but I can come back with that and uh, and provide a legal opinion. But I, right now, I don't think it needs to be. Councilor Hart. Further to Councilor Stewart's uh, question um, about insurance, I just want to understand how, what are the ramifications of and costs of insurance to the town. Um, is there a premiums for it if there is an accident of some sort with with the arches if should they fall someone hits them etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, what what does that look like if somebody speaks to that so through you mr. mayor um, like with the other arches that we had the ones that just came down uh, they were just part of our insurance policy so whatever policy we have for any of the facilities pertain to the town then those arches would fall under that same umbrella for coverage there's no premium it's, it's part of our umbrella, yes. And, and I would imagine that once they're built, uh, they would be more or less donated to the town, so then any liability caused by the arches would fall under our insurance policy. Yes, that's correct. Yes. Okay, thank you. Just like, just like the other ones were. Yes, yes. yes. Right, Council Chofa. Yeah, just <clears throat> another point on that. Um, we should be careful on what we're asked for because we could have uh, another instance in the town where they're going to uh, say somebody's going to come up and I want to donate uh, 300 trees or shrubs and everything else like a donation. And we're not going to go through an RFP pol uh, <coughs> policy for it and we're not going to ask them to maintain it for 20 or 30 years. Right. So there could be other. We have to be consistent throughout. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, Councilor. Through you, Mr. Sure. Mayor. Um, we're not asking them to maintain it. That's part of what they're offering. I just want everything to be documented and in writing as to what their responsibilities are and what ours are. Thank you. So, uh, through, yeah, so through you, Mr. Mayor, I know that the, the Summerfest Committee, uh, also um, the proceeds that, um, that they receive from the Summerfest the money gets put aside in a separate account, and that money has been used to maintain the current arches. So it hasn't been part of the uh, the operating budget for the, for that maintenance. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Councilor Hildebrand. Through you, Mr. Mayor. The question I have is one of the comments they made is they wanted to call the arches the the Rotary Club arches. I think is that part of this motion that we have in front of us, and I don't see that there. Uh, through you, Mr. Fair Mayor, I think the, the arches were, um, the naming was the, the Fawn Hill Rotary and Summerfest arches. So it includes the Summerfest Committee as well. Yeah. So is Council um, agreed that we will go with the uh, recommendation of the park? We will pass this as it is uh, in principle. Um, you, you don't have another motion on the floor, no. Mr. Mayor. You have you have a comment yeah. and a suggestion, but you don't have another motion on the floor to amend. So right now, the motion on the floor is the one as presented on the agenda. Okay. Also, we have to have an amendment. If if you were to have an amendment, it needs a seconder. Yes. All you have so far is comments. Okay. Excellent. So, Councillor Stewart, would do you wish to put forward an amendment? Uh. Yeah, I um, would like to put an amendment in so that we do have a binding agreement with them. Um, okay, we can't do anything about the RFP, but um, to make sure that the design is suitable for the location and that um, 
there is documentation that the monies put aside are put aside for the maintenance and also for uh, the removal of the arches at some time to be their responsibility because we were responsible for the last time they came down. Okay. Thank you. And now we need a seconder for the amendment. And Councilor Hahn is seconding it. Uh, any more discussion on the amendment? So now we, we vote on, the, vote on the amendment. Okay, sir. so now we are not voting on the uh, was uh, on the on the first motion we are voting on Councillor Stewart's amendment. So all those in favor and all those opposed. Okay, so the, the amendment does not carry then. Okay. Okay. So now so back oh, to the main yeah, motion. So now uh, I don't think I have to I don't think I have to read this again. And does anyone want me to read this again, or do we know what we're voting for? More or less voting uh, that we're going to allow the uh, arches to go ahead with, with no conditions, as stated, other than uh, uh, the uh, construction will be completed, full consultation with Town of Pelham staff, and will be subject to all necessary permits. Okay. Oh, uh, Through oh. you, Mr. Mayor. Go ahead. To the Director of uh, Engineering. You don't see any problems with this, with this proposal, as long as we work together? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, to the councillor, um, as in my opinion, I don't see any problems <clears throat> with the agreement. Um, obviously, anything uh, that's built on town property within our right-of-way, we'll have to go through the uh, permits and, and, and review procedures that we wouldn't normally perform on any type of development. But um, in this particular case, as part of the agreement, we would want to see and, and approve all the engineering drawings, make sure they're signed and sealed by a professional engineer, <clears throat> and uh, we would want to have a review of those and approve those drawings prior to the uh, Rotary Club proceeding with the uh, with the project. Thank you, Councillor Corey. Or Councillor Corey, you okay? Okay, Councillor. Okay. Uh, okay. Councillor Hahn. Oh, you're done. Okay, Councillor Hildebrand. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Through the Director of Public Works. I just want to ensure that the engineering review incur has the details of the structural attachment of the arches to whatever foundation or concrete blocks or whatever is reviewed, reviewed in detail and for safety of those. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, we, our department will want to make sure that uh, there's been a professional engineer that's uh, designed this uh, uh, installation as well as the foundations. And we would be looking in our review uh, to make sure that there, in fact, is a, a competent person, a uh, professional engineer that has uh, looked at these and, and designed and developed the even the installation procedure. Um, we would we would want to have a review of all that. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion? Then I will call the vote. All those in favor of this motion? Okay. And all those against? One against, and the motion carries. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, <coughs> oh, okay. Yep. Presentation and consideration of bylaws. Uh, motion put forward by Councillor Core, seconded by Councillor Trophy. Uh, be it resolved that the Council of the Town of Pelham, having given due consideration to the following bylaws, do now read a first, second, and third time, and do pass same, and that the Mayor and Clerk be and are hereby authorized to sign and seal the bylaws. One, bylaw 4087, 2019, being a bylaw to provide for drainage works in the Town of Pelham for the replacement of the Path Street culverts on the Big Creek Drain, and two, bylaw 4107, 2019, being a bylaw to govern the proceedings of the P Town of Pelham Council, its committees, the conduct of its members, and the calling of meetings, and to repeal and replace bylaw 3427, 2013, as amended, third reading and enactment. Discussion on this motion from council members. No. 
Okay, not seeing any, I call the vote on this motion. All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion carries. Okay. We're gonna do this now. Okay. Oh, no, this is to recess the in-camera portion. Oh, sorry, didn't read it all. Motion put forward by Councilor Hahn, seconded by Councilor Trophy. Be it resolved that Council recess the in-camera portion of the meeting and reconvene immediately following the committee meeting scheduled for this evening. Uh, all those in favor? All those opposed? Motion carries. So we're going to have a recess. So you can gavel to recess and then we'll reconvene as committee of the whole. So we will now have a five minute recess and then we will reconvene as committee of the whole.